Right, welcome to another CSS Basics course where I teach you the basics of cascading style sheets or CSS. Um, in this video I'm going to talk about Flexbox. I'm not going to go into a lot of the um, kind of advanced properties for Flexbox but I am going to go over some of the basic properties um, and what Flexbox does is it allows us to uh, more accurately align uh, different items uh, who are children of a what we call a flex container and I'll show you how that works um, basically this helps us to align items uh, across the container uh, or vertically in the container e either along the y-axis vertically or the x-axis um, horizontally it allows us to do that in a much more efficient way uh, in the code and also in a more reliable way so that it's uh, rendered in a better way in every browser uh, this has really high browser support. It's been around for several years, uh, even though not very many people actually use it in their web design. So you kind of be a, a forerunner at this point, but uh, the expectation is that <clears throat> as people see the power of Flexbox and how easy it is to do certain things like centering uh, uh, vertically and horizontally at the same time, um, that more people will adopt using it in their websites. Um, so let's go over some of the basics here. I have uh, an outer uh, box wrapper <coughs> and that's this red uh, container and then I have three inner uh, boxes with the generic box class so the generic box is 100 by 100 pixels uh, it's a pink background and has a, a one rem margin which is um, 16 pixels all around and then I also have uh, some specific classes and I'll show you uh, in just a moment why I did that as well <clears throat> and then um, our box wrapper has a height of 70 VH uh, that means that it's always going to be 70 percent basically of the um, the viewport height so not 70 percent of the of a particular container 70% of the viewport height it'll always stay uh, in that way height sorry uh, background is red <clears throat> and that's how we get the distinguishing mark between the two so what we're gonna do <clears throat> is we're gonna turn this box wrapper into what's called a flexbox container now a flexbox container is the outer wrapper and then whatever is a child a direct child of that flex box container that's going to be called the flex item so these are flex items this is the flex box container and so that's the way that the relationships work uh, with flex box and the way that we do uh, basically turn on flex box is we say display flex and it's uh, <clears throat> it's that easy and now you can see that our flex items have changed and that now they've come up along the x-axis here and they're now side by side so this is uh, one of the things that flex does so it brings all of your um, what's happening is before these these containers go all the way across and they all take up 100 percent of the space and what display flex does <clears throat> is it shores up all that space so this is your container now this is your box uh, they're only taking up as much space as they take up and they're coming up and it's pulling them up side by side so we used to have to do this using a, a float so we would do like uh, all of these would be float left and then <clears throat> uh, then they would line up next to each other uh, floats cause some issues when you start stacking things on top of one another because it's like uh, things floating up to the surface of the bathtub it's hard to push them down um, but what flexbox does is it lines them up along the x-axis uh, if we want we can also um, we can change the axis by saying uh, flex dash direction and uh, there are two directions one is row that's the default and the other direction is column and then now our axis it'll start aligning these along the y-axis instead of the x-axis okay 
So <clears throat> um, we're not going to do, we're just going to keep them in a row right now. Uh, two of the main properties that you're going to use are going to be called justify content. And justify content, what it does is it decides how it's going to disperse these child items along the axis, along the main axis. Okay, so the main axis here is going to be um, the horizontal axis, the x-axis. So we would say if we do something like center, then all of a sudden it distributes all of those items to the center. If we have more, then it would distribute all of those items to the center. It's hard to see here, but... you can see that it's centering all the items, right? Okay, and then um, the default is called flex start. This is the default, so we think of the left edge as the start, so top and left, and then you could also do flex end, so if you wanted to push all the items to the right, you would do flex end. And then there are a couple of other ones. Uh, one is called space, We'll do between first, space between. And what this does is sets the first one to the left edge <coughs> or to the beginning of the axis. If it's vertical, it would be the top. And then it sets the last one to the very, um, the very outside edge, the opposite edge, I guess, of the first one. And then it redistributes all of the ones in between in an even space. So you have a nice even spacing. This is what uh, we'll use a lot for uh, menus and for navigation elements so you have the site navigation here and then we'll have the navigation menu to the right and then it ensures <coughs> that as we move uh, as we move our um, window smaller that we keep that relationship uh, and it doesn't break and then the other one that we can use is called space around so now it creates even space around each of the items okay <clears throat> and if we were to add another one we could see that you'll see how that relationship changes and the space gets cut down a little bit but it keeps an even space to the outside as much space to the outside as to the inside and then this one has enough space here and here and so this is double the padding of this because each of these has the same kind of padding outside of it and then again, you're keeping kind of an even spacing of the items, regardless of uh, <coughs> what the screen size is. So this certainly has its place with things like uh, grids and uh, that type of thing. <coughs> so for right now, let's just do um, let's just do a center to that element because we're going to wind up centering the whole uh, the whole block. All right, and then uh, if we want to, along the x-axis, justify center, uh, spreads them out horizontally. If we change, like I said before, if we change the axis, though, you can see how everything gets flipped. So let's say flex, direction, column. <coughs> oh. So in flex, direction, column, Let's take this one away. And we need to make this maybe 100 so we can see a little bit better. So with flex direction column, you can see that it's justified the content uh, again along the main axis, but the main axis now is the Y. So if we undo that, we can see that it pushes it to the top. This is flex start. And along the y-axis, flex start is the top. So if we do justify con or content, that shifts uh, the content to the center along whatever main axis you have, right? So now it's pushing it to the center vertically, but not horizontally, right? Okay, so uh, in order to do kind of a secondary <coughs> uh, move, we need another property. And that property is called align dash items and then again we have the same properties we can say the default is flex start 
which is uh, when we're in column mode, flex start is along the, uh, the left edge. We can do center. So now our uh, items are perfectly centered uh, vertically and horizontally. We can do flex end and then that pushes it all the way to the end of the axis. Uh, we can also do uh, you could do space between and that type of thing, but um, because we don't have uh, we don't have a number of, of these columns, then it's not really going to do anything in this particular example. Uh, so let's take off the flex direction, and you can see here <coughs> that we have our centered boxes. This is along the x-axis again, and then when we do uh, flex start, that's the default, uh, it goes to the top. If we do, I showed you that just now, flex end pushes everything to the bottom. And then if you did uh, center, then it would push everything to the middle. So now you can see that we have a nice uh, vertically centered and horizontally centered uh, set of boxes. Um, you can do this, uh, you can nest um, one flexbox container inside of another, so each of these could actually be a flexbox container, or uh, you can make this box wrapper, you could set another container inside of this. Um, there are all kinds of things that you can do as you begin to nest uh, flexbox containers inside of one another and you can create some pretty sophisticated uh, layouts if you just kind of think through it a little bit. <coughs> um, those are the basics of Flexbox. Uh, there's one other property I want to show you. Uh, it's called Flex-Wrap. Now this has to do with being uh, responsive. So right now, right now when when, uh, when the edge of uh, our one margin uh, gets over here and it hits up against this hundred pixels uh, it starts to push it and squish it you see that you could see where that would not be a very uh, a good thing if you wanted to keep these boxes uh, the size that they are so to keep them the size they are there is something called flex wrap and what wrap is, does is determines when and how these items are going to wrap and go down to a bottom line so it does it for you. So it, the default is no wrap but if we want it to wrap we just say flex wrap wrap and now you can see it's already done it. So when when we get to the edge it'll automatically wrap. Can you see that? So when it gets to the edge it's automatically going to wrap our items. Now there's some problems with the uh, centering. <coughs> this is a problem that you run into so most of the time you're going to want this edge to go to the left and what you would do is you would create another container around these and then you would make sure that these items inside here are uh, flex wrapped or flex start um, and then that way you have a centered element here and then each of these is able to go down the left side so that's one way. You could also say um, when you do flex start and then the wrap happens you can see that it <coughs> it comes along this line and then you could set a you could set a media query so right here at you know 299 that's where it happens <clears throat> so you could set a media query that actually centers uh, these flex properties. So uh, there are ways to get around that. But this is generally how flex works in Flexbox. So you create a container, and that's called your flex container. And then you have child items inside of each container, and those are called your flex items. Uh, I've gone, again, just over the basics, but you can see in just a small amount of code, uh, without having to play with margin or anything else, that we've created centered center center items so center vertically 
and horizontally, which <clears throat> it's been very extremely difficult uh, and kind of hacky in CSS to do that before. So uh, we're starting out with great tools uh, to be able to do uh, centering and layouts and micro layouts inside of our greater layout. And uh, we'll cover, uh, I'll cover grid in a different video series, but that's a new layout style that's kind of a super layout style uh, for the whole page as opposed to just uh, particular elements. Um, well, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions about Flexbox, I actually have a, another series, like a longer, uh, more detailed series talking about some different things in Flexbox. Um, and I will put a link to that into the show notes uh, below the video. So you can check that out if you want to. But otherwise, this will be enough to get us going and to get us started uh, with the needs that we have for the website that we're using. Uh, thanks for watching. and. Uh, I'll see you next time.